weakened, but I think certainly we are seeing the signs of the tropical Atlantic, kind of what we call the main development region where most of our storms form, really waking up. Um, and um, I saw you had a satellite loop up of Invest 96L um, that looks like it may be our, our next uh, storm threat uh, here in a few days. That was Phil Klotzbach, the renowned hurricane specialist from Colorado State University. He and a group of expert forecasters releasing their final update to the university's hurricane seasonal outlook for the Atlantic. CSU has been issuing these forecasts for more than 40 years. And even if you're not a fan of these outlooks, it's easy to respect and listen to some of the brightest minds in tropical meteorology. Uh, getting that peek behind the, the curtain, very useful. Plus, as we're showing you, we're still early in the season despite already being two months in. Notice how nearly 90% of all activity in the Atlantic occurs in these final four months. But as Dr. Klotzbach mentioned, we're watching Invest 96L to see if it becomes our next name storm. And the next name on the list would be that E name, Aaron, that typically doesn't get assigned until the end of the month too, you see August 29th. So from a naming convention, yeah, you can make We're the argument. Ahead of schedule. A little ahead of schedule. But back to a 96 Alberta because mm -hmm. this could be the the next name. And I think that especially from Dr. Klotzbach, that's a that's an interesting signal because we have that area off the southeast yeah. coast, but that one might be slower to develop. Uh, this one maybe um, we have a shot of it receiving the next name, but at the end of the day, it is just another name for the basin. Yeah, and if we can get E and F off of the list uh, without having direct impact to land, great. I invite it. And the F that is great um, to me. Fernan. Fern Fernan will be the uh, the F name storm, mm. which typically doesn't happen until September. So yeah. We'll so see. we'll see how it all pans together. Now, this one we will have to look out for Bermuda because, again, we don't have a storm yet. And when you don't have the starting point, it's really hard to know the ending point. Yeah. And so we just have to look at all of the options here. High likelihood of it recurving and not moving to the east coast of the U.S., uh, but again, what does that mean for Bermuda? We'll see. Yeah. It'll help out a lot when this actually forms because the formation area is massive. When we show you that big shape, it almost looks like a butternut squash. Yeah. Now I'm going to be hungry for lunch. <laughs> uh, but it, there's a big difference on if that forms to the south of that area in the southern part or all the way up to the north. Yeah. It changes the outcome, right? So we just have to be patient and see how this pulls together because there is a lot of dust kind of surrounding this. It doesn't mean that that's on automatically going to be a no-go, but you got to wait for it to get into more favorable environment to likely see this actually develop a low. And then once you have that, the computer models have a lot easier time finding a solution. And offering that high confidence yeah, forecast, right? Exactly. And, and yeah, when we when we signal the wake up to the main development region, it really, it really depends on the season because there have been Augusts, let's harken back to just last year, yeah. weirdly quiet in the mm -hmm. MDR. So it, it is an element of, all right, when these waves start to emerge, are we seeing the factors that play into the MDR waking up? And then we look for the consistency. Yeah. I think that's the invitation of that. everything kind of opening up and, and warming up and um, warming up to development, that is, is are we consistently seeing waves coming across that actually have a chance yeah. of, of surviving and pulling yeah. into something? And I think that there's enough signals in the computer modeling that, yes, the main development zone likely is starting to wake up. The, the one behind 96L, so this is really from a steering perspective. We understand how that will likely turn. But then the we do have the next kind of one questionable. It's, and, and it is so far out. I mean, you're talking about something that's on land right now. It's a watcher. So. And there are biases within forecast models that always highlight that second one yeah. as more of a watcher than the first one. So mm -hmm. we have to get through the noise and also give us some time because we're heading through the weekend and it's probably not going to be until the weekend that this, this thing even, even emerges in, yeah. into the into the main development region. And wouldn't you know, behind that one is another one. will be another one. Which I think that's really the take home to the conversation. I think there's enough evidence to show that the main development zone is starting to wake up, which yeah. is our invitation to also wake up in response to that and being cognizant, being engaged in the conversation, because mm -hmm. we'll have more things pop up that are worth knowing. Yep. Um, in but, the near term, that steering, though, yeah. will take probably that Invest 96L farther to the north. And Off then the east coast. at least today, there are still signals that there will be almost a joining of forces that these ridges of high pressure across the Atlantic will take. That would then off, that would in theory steer these farther to mm -hmm. the west. I know we're out of time, but I want to just, just the wind show shear finally. Calm down in the Caribbean. That's, we could go on and on with this conversation. And actually, with the CSU yeah. 
update yesterday, they mentioned how the sheer in the Caribbean um, very high, and that's been one of the reasons why they've kept the numbers slightly lower compared to, to other years, but still above average. But keep in mind, so there's the storm getting pulled up to the north. That would be 96L. We get that next wave that moves through, and then as you get so far out, it becomes very chaotic. I mean, we're looking not tomorrow. We're looking at yeah, next Friday. Next Friday. And, and there clearly is a sign that maybe there would be more of a east to west trajectory as opposed to a hook. But also that stretch is like 2,000 miles, that that yeah. egg shape. It's like... It's huge. It's the size of America. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so the water is big. Hold on, I'm open up so your ears and know that it's time to pay attention and yeah. we'll keep you up to date.